Ellen McCauley at Pray It Up in Syracuse, New York. So we're talking about having that drive, and we can't do it without God. We need to say, God, I need to not want to have the things that aren't good for me. I need a uh, kick in my pants to get moving. I need to have the gratitude. Like, I was upset about this little teeny thing for five minutes, and I snapped right out of it. I said, how grateful am I that we don't have COVID? How grateful am I to be going to pray it off? How grateful am I to be 67 and have a good job where I help people? Whenever you start going down that spiral, you just got to kick up some things you are grateful for. And grace helps our minds. We ask God to help us. He helps us remember to be grateful. Because if we don't have a mental commitment to weight loss, that's where it is. Here is the greatest weight loss tool, right here. It's in our heads. And you know, important decisions are always difficult. We're, we're afraid to make the wrong decision. We're afraid we're not gonna be successful. We're afraid we're gonna fail again. And you know, uh, Mary Barber said, you know, I was in the group a few years ago. It didn't work out. That happens. There's people in this group that have quit, joined back again. There is a certain time in your life where you're ready to ask for help. You're ready to concentrate on yourself. There is no mastery of any skill without a commitment. And success and achievement requires that mental commitment. And, you know... We're worse off if we physically and psychologically don't commit because then we call ourselves failures. If we don't commit to this now, we think, well, it was a stupid program anyway. I had to do this food log. And then we start finding fault with the program. Or we start saying, it just wasn't a good time for me because I was busy doing this or that. Excuses. I'm going to do a whole meeting on excuses because we have a lot of them. And a couple people said to me tonight, who've been in the group for five minutes, not the brand new people, but recent people said, you know, I'm really discouraged because I worked really hard last week and I only lost two pounds. I thought I'd lose a lot more. And I said, you know, that's interesting. Let me tell you a little story. Um, I didn't eat anything at my brother-in-law's party but healthy food. I rode 30 miles on my bike this week. I did 18 thousand steps a day average. I had no dairy, no gluten, no sugar. I had like egg beaters, chicken, small salad for dinner. I stayed the same. I quit. That's it. I'm out of here. Sometimes that happens. You work so hard. So what? You don't think my heart's better for riding 30 miles on my bike? I can move better for doing 18,000 steps a day? So there's a lot of benefits that don't always throw up, throw up, show up on the scale. So don't be discouraged. There's going to be weeks when you've been in this group for a while where you lose two pounds and you're like, thank you, Jesus. So do not be discouraged. It's going to take a while to do this. And, you know, we fear another failure. We feel like, oh, my gosh, you know, I, I lost weight. I gained it back. There are people that did gain weight back, and they pulled themselves back. That is what we're here to have that help from God to do it. If we are always afraid, we're never free. If we're afraid we're going to fail, if we're afraid we're going to gain the weight back, if we're afraid we're not going to have any fun at the party. I had so much fun at the party. We were playing this game, Song Burst, and I had a picture on Facebook, and Judy, Judy Tech uh, put down there, I'd hate to have anyone play that game with Ellen. Oh, I was kicking their butts. <laughs> I am so good. You had to name the lyrics from a song, I mean, and they were from the 70s. Hello? Yeah. There is no music except the 70s music. <laughs> My friends joke, Ellen thinks there isn't any music after 1978, and I go, there isn't, except for disco. I love disco. But... I had a wonderful time. We think we can't have fun if we don't drink or if we don't have candy, if we don't have pizza, if we don't have wings. You can have fun. So here's what you do to master that fear, to, to, to make sure that we know that we can go ahead. You say, what am I grateful for? I already said that. I started going down about something and I said, oh no, oh no, I have things to be grateful for. What am I committed to? Well, I'm committed to my marriage. I'm committed to my children. I'm committed to my job. I've never been late. I, I, I've never taken an unplanned sick day or an unexcused sick day. I, I'm committed to that job. I'm committed to my mother. 
I'm committed to this church. I'm committed to God and Jesus Christ. Why can't I be committed to losing a few pounds and keeping it off? You see, you take all those things you're committed to, and then you boil it down to this. And then you say, who do I love? We even do that with the kids. I mean, our little great nephew, Alex, is, is three years old. And we've done that with our kids. We go, who loves you? And they say, Mama. And he calls my mother Gigi for great grandma. Gigi, Aunt Alan, Uncle Bobby. And then he just goes through it all. How great. Why don't you do it to yourself sometime? Who do I love? mother. I love, I love the pray it off group. I'm not stingy with my love. I love you guys. How could I love them better? How can you love better? We can always love better. What in my life do I really feel good about? I feel good when I highlight things when I do them. People say, why do you do that? I go, makes me feel good. <laughs> I do things that make me, maybe that wouldn't make you feel good, but it makes me feel good. Maybe it makes you feel good to rub your feet. I say, rub them. The other night, Bob said, oh, I wish you would rub my feet. I ran right over so I would rub him. He goes, what are you doing? I go, you just said I wish you would rub my feet. He goes, but you're rubbing my feet. I go, you wanted me to. And guess what? He loved it. I'm not going to do it again, but I it. <laughs> So what practices are required today to promote my goals? Well, what are your goals? you got to have goals in order to promote them. That's why you got to write it down. Now, this is the next part that really is a wake-up call. I am aging and there's no way to escape growing old. I am subject to ill health and there's no way to escape getting sick. You can try. I am mortal and there's no way to accept death. All, listen, these, these are wake-ups. All that I value and everyone I love are impermanent and there's no way to escape separation from them. So we need to love when we can, be grateful when we can, be healthy when we can. My actions are my only true belongings. When I say to my kids, well, I am going to do this, they know I will. If I say I'm going to do something, they can take it to the bank and cash it. I never say to them, oh, well, you know, something came up. I'm not going to do it. Is your action take it to the bank and cash it when it comes to yourself? Do you say, you know, on June 23rd, I'm going to get an award. I don't know what, which one it is, but I'm going to get an award. Take it to the bank and cash it. I am not judged by the number of times I fail, but by the number of times I succeed. And the number of times I succeed is in direct proportion to the number of times I can fail and keep on trying. We need to reframe events. We are living through a once-in-a-lifetime pandemic. We're doing the best we can. We're here. We're doing the best we can. And you know what? Life is just a game we must play to win. And boy, there was a Macaulay play to win. If I play a game with a kid, I play to win. they got to learn to toughen up. Look, you guys are out there. Really? Yes. And guess what? They do. And they play harder and they enjoy it more when you really try. And, and, and I'm talking about things like sorry and trouble. Things. You don't, you, you play to have fun mainly. All right, uh, I love this. Oh, this is so funny. For example, a married woman may want to achieve a better body, but on the other hand, she may also think that success will lead to more men hitting on her, which could threaten her marriage. <laughs> I actually had someone quit praying off because of that. Oh my. Because she was afraid if she lost too much weight, there would be temptation. I'm a little afraid of that myself. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Okay. Since living is a process, living well is a process, the work continues. I'm going to stop right there, Bob. <laughs>